in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let somebody take initiative to tell the media guys that this speaker is not functioning well. Whenever you notice anything not functioning well, open your mouth and speak or act. If you pretend you never say, saw it, it is wickedness. Pretense is a part of wickedness. Pretending is a part of wickedness. You saw it seizing. <clears throat> and everybody pretended it's nice. It's not. Whenever you pretend you are a wicked person, people are hearing me online. Whenever you pretend you are wicked, don't pretend. It's not good. Don't ever pretend. Whenever you notice something not sounding well, call somebody. To, Excuse me, that speaker is not sound. Don't pretend. Oh, come, let us. Die. You're a wicked person. So don't act wickedly. It's not okay. It's not good as a Christian. And not just in church. Everywhere you go to, whenever you know something is not working well, call the attention of somebody who can put it to order. Don't pretend and pretend. And say, it doesn't concern. Oh, come, let us. Adore <laughs> Christ. Oh my God. If you like that, it's point. That is... When you do that, when you plant that as a seed, you will harvest it. When something is going wrong with your life, too, people that God has sent to help you will pretend they never knew. Oh, come let and your life is spoiled. And you are calling the attention. Can you guys help me there pretending because you planted it as a seed. So don't pretend. From henceforth, stop pretending. Whenever you notice anything is not working out well, the sound is not okay, call the attention of somebody who can attend to it. So they can attend to it. Have you heard me? See, I'm on the altar. God knows I'm telling you the truth. Uh -huh. so, so that you, you, you are not judged by it. And God now asks you, but the apostle told you guys publicly and openly because it's wrong. That thing is season. And you pretended you never knew it was season. Don't do that again. I'll be teaching tonight on the topic putting on immortality in this mortal world. Putting on immortality in this mortal world. Putting on immortality is a Bible study and then we're going to take communion to activate it. And on Thursday, we'll get into the prayer aspect of it because prayer is a major aspect of this teaching. Putting on immortality. I want to see the topic rolling on the screen. Putting on immortality in this mortal world. I want to see that topic rolling on the screen. There should be somebody there that could do that. You stay where you are. Putting on immortality in this mortal world. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 51 to 54. I pray what I'm about to teach you today becomes a reality in your life. I pray it becomes a reality in your life. I pray it's not just a teaching to while away time. I speak to the life of everyone also watching online that the teaching of today will not just be a mere time wasted to occupy the Tuesday teaching time. I, play, I pray it manifests in your life in the name of Jesus. It's already manifesting in my life. I want a higher level of it. By the grace of God, I will get it. But I pray it manifests in your life so that you are able to live an immortal life in this mortal world. Living an immortal life in this mortal world. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 51 to 54. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible that speaker is still not fine that speaker pastor dixon this speaker is still not fine sir 
in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory i am waiting for you to come and fix it pastor dixon i'm waiting i'm waiting now so that we do not blow it and pretend we did not know command the spirit of complacency the spirit of being laid back the spirit of anger confusion the spirit of pride arrogance to die in this church in the name of jesus christ i declare everybody will serve god with a good heart in this place in jesus name What is immortality? Immortality is when a man sheds the terrestrial in order to put on the celestial. When a man sheds the terrestrial. The terrestrial is ability to live on earth. Every human being has the terrestrial you know, power to live on earth. Uh, to live in the world. But there comes a time when you have an encounter with God, you can start living a celestial life on earth. You can start living a celestial life in this world. And by the time I get down deep into the teaching, you'll understand what I'm showing you. You'll discover that some people really lived celestial lives on earth. And then as a child of God, God wants you to have a taste of heaven on earth. Living a celestial life in this celestial world. Number two, it is when a man transcends from ordinary life to the extraordinary life when a man transcends from the ordinary life to the extraordinary life when you see somebody living like he is not fully part of this world living an extraordinary life on earth again number three this is when a man moves from the natural to the supernatural life from the natural the normal thing that should happen to normal human beings and then you now move to the supernatural kind of life and begin to operate like that hallelujah praise god all right number four this is when the when natural occurrences are suspended in man when natural occurrences are suspended in a man when god suspends natural occurrences that what happens to others naturally will not happen to that person again that is what happens when you move from a mortal from mortal life to an immortal life and this immortal life is very possible on earth number five it is when a man begins to live like heavenly being on earth when a man begins to live like heavenly being on earth when a man begins to live like a heavenly being on earth when things that happen to others does not happen to you number six this is when God activates the immortal aspect of man's existence in the now, inside you. What should have happened to spirits? What should have happened after you leave this world? When God activates it to start happening to you right now, that is what I'm talking about today. Number seven. This is when normal things that happen to normal people ceases to happen to you. And important things, uncommon things begin to happen to you uncommon things begins to happen to you i will show you some examples i'll show you some examples so you can understand what i'm talking about today i'll show you some example examples nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21 nehemiah chapter number 9 verse 21 the bible says yea 40 years 
did thou sustain them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing their clothes wax not old and their feet swelled not forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing their clothes wax not old and their feet swelled not i want to imagine that scripture <laughs> what happened to this projector pastor this is what happened to this projector or i switch it on this is when it should be working this one hour that we're having bible study is when it should be working if it works outside this time it's not fulfilling destiny this is the real time that it's bought for can we switch it on please robinson help them to switch it on it's bible study we need it to work now so that we can see the bible Father, deliver me in Jesus' name. Now, I want every member of this church, if you are really a member, really a member, not a visitor, get to church an hour before service. And join to fix things in church. Behave like you are a son and a daughter in the house. Not like an alien or a visitor. May your blessings not be visiting you. May your blessings reside in your life. In Jesus name. Remember whatever you do in the house of God. Reflect in your life. Stop coming to church like visitors. Coming to check what is going on in world changers. If you are a member of this church. Get down to church early and help to fix things so that the church is on at that particular moment in time that everything is needed to run getting to church late including those who are living in church getting is very bad may your blessings not come late in jesus name get to church early and let's utilize what god has given to us this one and a half hours, two hours, we should be in God's presence. Everything should. It's not time for things to now die. And then we are pretending as if we did not know what to do to make them come on. We have three cameras. We are using only one. People have lamented all over the world. But you guys said you have three cameras. Why are we using one? Even if the one, the other one is doing black and white. Why don't you just use it? So that we are not focusing on the person preaching. Let everybody be useful in the house of God. So that we are not behind. And on the last day, when God begins to sit on his white throne judgment and begin to tell you what you have enjoyed, that you start crying and pretend you did not know. We have access to God. Let us utilize what God has given to us. Everybody. Everybody who claims to be a member here. All right. Nehemiah chapter number 9, verse 21. The verse is, Yea. Forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. Let's pick two points there. For forty years, their clothes did not become old. Naturally, it is impossible. True or false? Am I right? I mean, if I wore a clothes for forty years and it remained your size, it can never happen. Even if you bought the clothes when you are. 30 years old. 30 plus 40 is what? By the time you are 70, that clothes will be a rag. Am I right? But these guys wore one cloth for 40 years. They grew with the cloth and the cloth remained new for 40 years. This is what I'm talking about. When God switches on a mortal life in a mortal world. That's what I'm talking about. 
Imagine you wore a clothes. After two years, the clothes would have faded. Am I right? Even if you wash it once in a month or once in two months. After a while, that cloth will change color. When you wear it, people will know that ah, this cloth has tried. This man is punishing this cloth. Aye. Or God delivered this cloth from punishment. But the Bible says to us, for 40 years, these guys were wearing the same cloth because there were no tailors in the wilderness sewing clothes for them. Neither was there any shop right or supermarket uh, in the wilderness where they went to buy new clothes. It was forest. They were moving from bush to bush. For 40 years. They must have their clothes remain new. That is what I'm talking about. When the supernatural takes over the natural. When God begins to make you live a supernatural life on earth. And makes your life different from other people's life. The Bible did not stop that. The Bible says, and their feet swell not. What does that mean? See, when you trek for a long time, your leg will swell up. These guys were trekking for 40 years and their legs were normal. When you trek for a long time, you are walking, you are, you are, you are trekking, trekkers association, you are trekking. After a while, your leg will be paining you. After a while, you will need to sit down somewhere and rest. But these guys trekked for 40 years and their legs they remain normal. Now, this is supernatural. When God switches on a mortal kind of life, you know, when we got married, there was a time when my wife's leg used to swell up. Her leg will swell up. Every time she show me her leg has become bloated. She will put her leg on the pillow for the water to, to, to go back to the body. Regularly. Wonderful. It's alright. <laughs> okay. Alright. But it was this scripture I used to pray for her. And I said to her, the Bible says, their legs swelled not in the wilderness. And you are not in the wilderness. Your life should be better than that one. Therefore, no evil will befall you. She believed it. And her leg is normal now. It doesn't swell again. Your leg will not swell again in Jesus' name. Live a supernatural life on earth. Let me show you again. Deuteronomy 34 verse number 7. Living is an immortal life. On earth. Deuteronomy 34 verse number 7. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. The Bible says to us, And Moses was 120 years old when he died. And his eyes was not dim. And his natural forces, nor his natural forces abated. <laughs> now, how many of you have seen somebody who is 100 years old before? You have seen them, how do they look? Ma? Every part of the body did what? Has wrinkles. What about the eyes? Very small and they see very dimly. They don't see clearly anymore. They use sense to know what is going on. And they look at you, they, then they hear your voice. Say, is that not... Because they're not seeing you clearly anymore. They don't just bounce up and down. They walk slowly. Some of them are bent. They manage to just move gently. Am I correct? If you have seen those who are 80, 90, 100. Now, the Bible says at 120, Moses' eyes were sharp. He doesn't need eyeglasses. <laughs> Number two, his natural forces were not abated. He was walking straight. He was behaving like a young man as if he was 25 years old. He was just talking, hey, I'm a Niaji, hey, poor son. Hey, how are you, man? He was just normal. In fact, another version says, if Moses marries at 120, he's where we still get pregnant and give birth to children because the guy was uncommonly healthy. His teeth were not falling off. When you're 100 plus, you, uh, it is well with your teeth. <laughs> But Moses operated that life on earth. God made sure that he was young like he was at 20 when he was 120. You can live that life. You don't need to be bent at 60. Some people are bent in one corner like that. In fact, some people like faking oldness. I don't like it. 
they like trying to behave like they're not too old. They, 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 when they walk a bit, they, 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 they shake, they shake, they, 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 they shake so that people can be fearing them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, by the time I'm 100, you wouldn't even know. I'll be normal. I'll be very normal. In fact, I have told God to remove all the gray hair. I don't want gray hair around my head, but so I can just be fresh and healthy. Because gray hair can betray you. When they look and say, ah, this man is an elder. Praise God. But you know, many times you see people who behave as if they are older than their age. Stop that nonsense. At 120, Moses was standing straight. Another version says Moses was walking as if there were springs underneath his steps. He was still bouncing. He was still bouncing. He was not walking and they are helping him raise his leg. And he's checking. <laughs> and he's that is when God switches on a mortal lifestyle inside you. May God do it for you. Let's go a bit more. Acts chapter 14, verse 19 to 20. It's all right, you can go. Acts 14, 19 to 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter number 14, verse 19 to 20. And there came to the certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now watch this scripture. The Bible says to us, some people were persuaded to stone Paul, and they stoned him and drew him to the city. They put him on the ground like this. They put his body. After stoning, his body was torn by the stone. The stone has scattered his body. So they pulled him and pulled him and pulled him out of the city and dumped him somewhere. Are you following me? May they not pull you like that. While they were pulling him, his head was scratching the ground. His hands were pulling on the floor. They were pulling his legs, dragging him anyhow. And they dumped him somewhere. The Bible says after they dumped him out of the city, they believed he was dead. And then the disciples stood around him and they began to say, Father, hey, they stole Paul. Please, Lord, have mercy on us. Ah, they stole Paul. Paul just stood up and said, hey, hey, what happened here? They says, I want to bury. He said, bury who? He said, can I have my bag and let me go and preach? And his bones just came back together. Quack, 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 quack. They just stood up and they wore his suits. <laughs> he combed his hair and they carried his jacket and carried his Bible and took off to go and preach. That is the supernatural life. Now, some of you might think the stone did not hit him well. Let us give you two stones, too. So we check whether I did. <laughs> you know, some people are like, ah, maybe they didn't really use stone on him. Let's take you outside that town. I'll give you only two stones on your head. You know there are levels. The guy was stoned to death. But the Bible made us understand that. He got up a few minutes after they finished stoning him. And he said he was going to preach. But the disciples stood round about him. He rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to David to go and preach. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is living a supernatural life on earth. Living a supernatural life, an immortal life. Hallelujah. Let me show you another one. God suspended death for Saul, an injury. There was a time when my son, this young man, was hit by a car. Some years ago, when we were at YMC, we just finished service in the evening. And then he likes the light of a car. So there was a BMW that one of our members had then. So he went to touch the light at the back. And the member did not know. He reversed and hit him. And he fell down and he climbed him. And he turned on him. And his pampas and his clothes, everything got done. When the mom saw him under the car, this guy was still a tiny baby. She threw away this one and ran to go and help him. And her leg twisted and she also fell. So her leg twisted there. She was on the floor. This one was bruised and wounded because she threw this one away. This guy was under the car. I was the only one left. So I came out of the church when I had noise. Some people were afraid that he had died. They entered their cars and left. I've seen many things in this Kenya. If it's on Nigeria, people will still rush to help you. 
I mean human beings that I ministered to ran into their cars and drove off in my presence like this. Only one or two people remained. The rest ran away. They thought apostle is finished. What they just have closed. <laughs> Devil had visited them and killed all of them. They took off. In my presence, they drove off, drove their car. In those days, many people will come with cars. He drove away. So we picked up this guy from under the car. All his pampas were turning. He cried and he couldn't cry anymore. He was just looking like that. He couldn't get up again. His bones were disconnected from the joints. The body was so torn. Some part bleeded and stopped bleeding. The bleeding had, he had seen. He was torn. So there was nothing remaining. And it was a baby then. I think he was two years old. So we carried him to the hospital. The hospital said, first of all, check his heart, whether it's intact. And the tire mark of the tire was all over his body because the guy turned on him. <laughs> so we put him there. They started rushing up and down. Her own leg needs to be fixed. This guy needed to be... All the, his body was peeled off because it was a concrete floor. Basketball courts. That's where we were. So all his body was... All the skin had gone. So I got into the hospital. I was the only one now standing, checking this one, checking that one, checking this one. But this guy's home was more important because... A vehicle was on his head, was on him. So they I gathered him together, pulled him together, plastered him, did everything. He, woke, he couldn't cry. He couldn't get up. He would just be looking like that. For weeks, they were treating him, treating him, treating him. So he couldn't move. He couldn't even get up. So we only carry him to church and lie him down. He would just he remained there. He couldn't get up. He would just lie down there and be looking at you. After to so carry him again to the car and go. I told him we were just lying down there. Until one day I was preaching the word of God. And the anointing came on me. And as I began to vibrate, he stood up and began to walk. That was the end. <laughs> In those days, whenever I'm charging, he's always charging. But he could not do that because he was wounded. He stood up. That was the end. God healed every wound except one part of his body. I had a tire. The tire mark is still on his body. BMW tire mark is still on his body. I asked God, he moved, God said, no, so you can remember what I did for you. The tire mark is still on his body there. So that it doesn't look like we're telling you stories. His bones were dislocated. He couldn't get up, man. But that day, the anointing connected him back to it. See, may you live a supernatural life on earth. His bones came back together and he stood up and began to walk. Hallelujah. Praise God. May God suspend death in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 28, verse number 3 to 6, the Bible told us that Paul gathered six and made fire because it was raining and the whole place was cold and they were by the sea. They just escaped shipwreck. The Bible made us understand that while he was gathering the sticks, a serpent came out and climbed his hand. A viper. The Bible said to us, while the viper climbed his hand, Paul shook the viper into fire. And the snake fell into fire. And Paul felt no harm. The Bible says to us, the people are waiting because they know that snake. They know whenever that snake climbs you, you are finished. So they were calculating. They will soon swell up. Like Uncle Lagba just swelled up and died. In fact, Brother Tamedo, when that snake bites him, he <laughs> even swelled up and busted. In fact, they remembered Pa, 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 Jimo and Pa James when the snake beat them. Their heads, first of all, they stood there. Pa, later their stomach joined. Pa, and they scattered. So they were now waiting. Pa will soon swell up and die. Pa will soon swell up. After they waited for a long time, they, must say they changed their mind and said he was a God. Listen carefully. There's an anointing, a grace that can come upon you, that can be activated by the communion tonight, that can make serpentine bite to be suspended from hurting you. The power of the serpent can be suspended from your life. And it can't hurt you, sir. It cannot. That when snakes see you, they will take off. Many years ago, we told the story of Pastor W.F. Kumui, a man of God, a servant of God in Nigeria. The Bible made us understand that no, no, the story made us understand that there was a time when they wanted to go and buy a certain land. When they got to the land, they said there are some snakes there, and people used to throw dead bodies of witches and wizards and all that there. And they sold that land to him. When they got that, the story was long somehow, but I remember they told us that 
when they entered the forest, a snake stood up and mentioned their name. Snake that talks. And the man of God stood and stretched his hand and prayed. And they, they said the snake had already stood up to bite them. Normally, when that snake started, he would kill anybody who enters that forest. The snake stood up like that. When the man of God stretched his hand and father fired prayer, the snake hit his head on the floor, bam, and died. <laughs> and today they have beat their church. Yes. Are you following somebody? Now, God can give you power over serpentine devils to the extent that they cannot hurt you. What I'm teaching you today is the reality. I operate that life. I live that life, sir. I'm not telling you what is not done. The Bible uh, Idaosa said when he was very young, and then his pastor said, Heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. And then the pastor said, You can do it. Then he stood up and said, Excuse me, sir, can I do it? The pastor said, Yes, you can do it. Idaosa, you can do it. Say, Sir, can I raise the dead? Say, You can raise the dead. Then he asked the pastor, Have you done it before? The pastor said, No. <laughs> yeah, Pastor, have you done? Pastor said to fear about he raised the I have not done that before. What about the sick? Pastor said, I have not healed anyone before. If I have not healed a good self, he said, ha. But he said, We can do it. Said, can I do it? The pastor said, Yes. He got angry and said, Fine, we are going to do it today. And then he took his bicycle and started riding. And we moved from the house. Anybody dead here? They said, No. That, come on, to fear about He said, Anybody dead here? I said, No. He was taking his, his, his bicycle away. Until he said by 4 p.m. He got to me. anybody. They said, Yes, one baby just died now. He said, Can I have the baby? They said, Why do you want to take the baby? He said, I want to raise this baby out of the dead. And he first of all cried because the baby had died. He said, The more he cried, the more the baby died. Ah. Then he took the Bible and read where Jesus read the dead. He said, Jesus called the baby damsel. Arise. So he asked them, What is the name? They told him the name of the baby. So he commanded the baby in the name of Jesus Christ and called the name of the man and said, Rise up! And the baby woke up and everywhere went agog. He said, The next day, everybody came to his house and truly, that's his house. Everybody good, they lined up. They were waiting for him. That was a, hey, people who have died many years, they brought them to <laughs> All kinds of people were brought to his house after that news spread. And that was the revival. See, today that we've not recovered from that revival in Nigeria. He started from one dead body raised back to that by that house. Are you following somebody? You can operate some uncommon realms on earth. You can operate some common realms on earth. Are you hearing me, somebody? Open your heart to it. Don't say it's an impossible thing to do. It's not impossible. That's why God is making me teach you that you can live an immortal life on earth. You can live an immortal life. The power of the serpent can be suspended over your life. Exodus. Exodus 23, verse number 25 to 27. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. Says, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy, wa and thy water, and we take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land. The number of your days are fulfilled. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thy enemies turn their backs unto thee. Let me show you the truth. The power of sickness can be suspended in your life. Oh, you didn't hear me. I repeat that statement again with audacity. The power of what? Sickness and diseases can be suspended in your life. I believe this scripture seriously. It works for me. The power of sickness and diseases can be suspended in your life. That you will not be sick of any disease. Yes. And as we take communion today, believe it. Believe it. Here, any mosquito that bites me is in trouble. I don't even run, up, run away from it. It's my wife, when she comes to the office there, she sees them. There are mosquitoes here. I hope you know there are very serious mosquitoes in this area. Very angry ones. They are very big like that. When you, when, sometimes when I just do my hand like this, bam, five, we die. When I, bam, four, and, <laughs> and then I have to sleep. When I sleep, you see them, biting. When I get up, I'm fine. They are the ones that will die. <laughs> yes, sir. God can give you power over such things that they cannot hurt you. They cannot do you any harm. Yes. Sicknesses and diseases bow to you. Sicknesses and diseases bow to you. I mean, when I saw the scripture, 
and I studied and discovered that Jesus never fell sick. I made up my mind. I will never fall sick. I will never. No more sickness in my life. I made up my mind. I prayed it until God told me, I've answered you. I prayed and I'll go to church. Sickness will be over in my life. In, those, in the early days of my life, I used to be very sick. I told you guys there was a time when something used to happen to my head. And water would be gushing out of my head like this. Some ugly stinking water. The told bit of the disease. My father went and bought all kind of drug and gave me. I drank it, refused to go until I went to deeper life retreat somewhere, and they prayed for me. They didn't disappear. So I knew it was witchcraft. Now, at the time in my life, one kind of disease used to trouble my hand, and water be gushing out of my hand. It will even glue together sometimes. If I if I leave my hand for a while, it will join together. So I have to be separating it. Wound all over my hands. After a while, prayer was made on me again. The thing disappeared. I said, at the time, I used to urinate blood. When I urinate blood, we follow. When I went to hospital, they said to God, Chisosomiasis. That prayers were done on me. The thing disappeared. I have suffered many things. So one day, I made up my mind. I don't want sickness in my life again. In those days, I used to fall sick, sir. When I'm having fever, I'll be dreaming all kinds of dreams. I've never had those dreams of fever. When you have fever like this, you will dream. You now see yourself in an aircraft and also you, you are trekking inside an aircraft. <laughs> all those kind of stupid dreams. I, I don't know whether you guys have you guys have You see yourself in an aircraft, but you're also trekking. All those funny kind of things that doesn't make any sense. Hallucination. You you <laughs> you you see yourself wearing shoe on your head. <laughs> all kinds of stupid dreams. <laughs> You see yourself, you see yourself, there is food, but nobody giving the food to it. Hunger is worrying you. <laughs> All kinds of dreams like that that look very funny. And I hated them. And I kept on praying that God should deliver me. One day I got angry. I said, I don't want to be sick again for the rest of my life. I prayed it. Prayed the seven days, 14 days, 21. I kept on praying one prayer point. I hate sickness. I hate, I don't want sickness. Give me power over sicknesses, starting from my own body. And one day God told me, granted, until today, I stop falling sick. Till now. Till now, sir. I stop falling sick, sir. <laughs> I don't fall sick anymore. I live that immortal life here. I'm not registered in any hospital. I remember when I went to University of Nairobi to do my master's degree. They said we should do medicals. I never went. I never visited the hospital university, that's University of Nairobi clinic. I never visited that place till I left University of Nairobi to finish my master's. The only time I branched there was when a student, they said, was fainting. That the student died or so. That the student fainted, died. That was when I went to pray. The student got up. The student had died, fainted like that. So I went there to pray. That was when I went there. Then there was another time. I, the next time I went there was after I graduated many years when they took first to Hundu there. And that was when I went there again. I'm not registered there. They don't have my name there. When I went to do my PhD in Kenyatta University, they said we must do medicals. I, the paper is still in my house. I'm graduating. I'm not, I don't even know where the medical center is. I've never been there before. I'm not registered there. Because I don't need it. Sir. I don't need it. By the grace of God. How do I know? I prayed myself into it. Asking God to activate the immortal chapter of my destiny. And I'm not a lazy man. I work hard. I, I, I'm not just hard. I look into minute detail that I don't know I look into, sir. That's why I see this church like this. Every detail. Sometimes I will get up in the night to come and check by myself. Look at things every, very well. One, one night I got up because something told me that the glasses are breaking. So I got up and I began to walk around and I took photographs. And I asked Pastor Dixie, Pastor Dixie, how many guys say one? I said no. So just why? Because I've walked around myself. I, I don't fear anything. The fear aspect, the fearless aspect of it is also part of the supernatural. Things that make everybody scared doesn't make it scared. Why? Because I played myself into it, asking God to make it happen to me. Hey, excuse me, sir. You can live a sickness-free life. Not every time when there's a sickness in the area, the thing will catch you. Apollo, Apollo, I come. You, you also catch your, your, your eyes are not red. Your eyes are red. You're not wearing that good. Hey. Cough, cough, cough. You're joining. <coughs> After that, Tuberculosis come, you join them. Tuberculosis. <coughs> After a while, uh, 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 cholera. Follow them. Cholera. Cholera. Later, now they say, Ebola. <laughs> it will not happen to you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you following me, somebody? Make up your mind. There are some things that can never happen to you. You can get to the level that such things will never happen to you. Corona, Corona. No matter how they distribute Corona, it will never reach me in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if they are carrying Corona that they are distributing from house to house. Take some Corona. Yeah. It will never reach me, sir. It will not reach members of the church. It will not reach us in Kenya. God has delivered us. It will not reach us in Africa. No matter how they are distributing it. Dashing people. Whether they are sending by Wi-Fi, it will not reach you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you following me, somebody? So, God can suspend the power of sicknesses and diseases from your life and make it not to touch you. The Bible says in John chapter 11, verse 43 to 45, John 11, when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and has seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Here, God suspended the power of death and decay. God suspended the power of death and decay. God suspended the power of what? Death and decay. God can suspend the power of death and decay in your life. That you will not die and you will not decay. This guy was already four days in the grave. He didn't decay. Now wait, let us say the truth. As soon as you die, five minutes after you die, you start decomposing. Five minutes. Check medical, let them tell you the truth. Five minutes after you die, your brain starts decomposing. You start becoming water. That is why they used to put some injection into the person's body to make his body stick together. Or else, the person will just start smelling immediately and start losing shape start drying up, water will start gushing out from your ears, your nose, your mouth all the holes in your body will start oozing out water that is stinking and smelling and then give yourself by the second thought, the mark God will start manifesting start eating you while you are there but you know this guy was there for four days I don't even know whether mark God already eating him, as soon as Jesus called his name Lazarus, all mark God died and became <laughs> and became flesh immediately Comfort! Everything became normal. God suspended the power of decay. Oh, you will not decay. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not decompose. You will not deteriorate. Have you seen something when they are sick? They look haggard. Eh? You've not seen them before. When you see them, you won't know them anymore. They look haggard. What is happening to this guy? Then you know he's sick. There was a man who had cancer some years ago and they asked him to come and pray for him. When I entered the room where he was, fear gripped me because he was remaining like bone. So I fired prayer, fired prayer, fired prayer. After I finished praying, in fact, I went to the level I, I suspended death and told him he's not going to die. <laughs> when I finished praying, he told everybody to leave the room. He said he wants to talk to me. He said I should bring my ear close. So I brought He said I should release him. He said the suffering is too much. He went, ah, what I came out of my eyes. He said he wants to go. I told him, no, you're not going. We refuse you from going. So I held him. He did not go. He remained alive. I kept on praying there every day for like two weeks. By the third week, I was invited to Abuja to preach for three days. So I flew to Abuja and I told them to keep praying until I returned. They said as soon as he heard that I've traveled, bam, he stopped eating. He told them he doesn't want to eat anymore. He fasted for those three days. I was at the airport returning from Abuja when they told me he had died. He fasted and prayed that God should take his life. And he was too tired of living. Why? The sickness has eaten him up and made him to deteriorate. Ah! By the time you take to communion, in the name of Jesus Christ, God will cause you to be decay proof. You will not decay. You will not deteriorate. Nothing will dry you up or make you to be bloated. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody hearing me today? Are you hearing the word of God? It will work for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, how many of you like to be to decay? Have you seen some people? Why they are alive? They are already smelling. Their teeth are smelling. When they come around, they are smelling like obuko. Obu. 
smelling serious. They are deteriorating gradually. Organs in their body are feeling and dying. You will not deteriorate in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Joshua chapter number 10, verse 12 to 14. Joshua chapter number 10, verse 12. The Bible says, Then speak Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the new moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemy, of their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and he said not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. A man stopped the sun from moving down and the moon and made everything stand. See, God suspended the power of the universe for a man. God suspended the power of the universe. The power that rotates the entire universe for one man. Because he prayed. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, God can do the same for you. He can do it. He can do it for you. When we came here to excavate this land one year plus ago, one and a half, one year plus ago, when we came here, rain started falling opposite here. And the cloud was coming and the wind was coming towards you. know how rain falls. And the wind was coming very fast and the cloud everywhere was already dark. And the foreman told me, we cannot do work today. This rain will disturb us. So I said, no, it will not fall here. He said, ah, ah pastor, can't you see it? It's already coming. In fact, by the time we were standing out there by the gate, the rain was already, uh, you know, some drops were already coming. You know, as the rain comes, it was already falling heavy rain there, so it was coming towards us here. So I said, no, in the name of Jesus, I command that rain to be diverted to this area. Not one drop in this area as we start this building and as we continue in Jesus name. So I prophesied it. I prophesied it. I fired it. I fired it. He was watching me. Then suddenly the rain stopped coming here. He started moving this way. In our presence, the cloud was moving that way, moving that way. And then serious rain started falling in that area from the other street down. But in this place, there was not a drop. The man looked at me and said, Pastor, if I don't know you as a pastor, I will think you're a devil worshiper. I said, huh? So I asked him why. Is he only a devil worshiper? Is he a devil worshiper that can't? He said, yes. In Kenya, only devil worshippers stop with us. Hey, this is the real one. We stop. <laughs> Original one. Devil worshippers own is fake. One day we were going to church and my sons were following me and they saw me and I spoke to the rain. The rain was falling. I said, rain, stop because you are going to disturb the service today. And God needs to be worshipped, not you. You cannot take the place of God. So stop falling. And suddenly the rain stopped. They remembered, hey, the rain has stopped. So we entered the car and went to church. Some few days later, we were about to go to church and the rain started again. And they told me, sir, the rain is falling. I said, two of you stop the rain. They told them, told the rain to stop. In the name of Jesus Christ, stop. After a few minutes, the rain stopped. They came back and said, the rain is not there. That's how it works. Simple faith, sir. Excuse me, sir. You can live an immortal life in this mortal world. Yes, sir can live an immortal life in this mortal world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you still here somebody? Psalm 114 verse 3 to 7. Psalm 114 verse 3 to 7. The Bible says, The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains keep like rams. And the little hill like lambs. What illeth thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest? Thou Jordan that thou did, wa, was driven back. Ye the mountains that skip like rams. And ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Now, here, God suspended the power of the sea. And made it to flow back to source. Now listen carefully. The sea doesn't flow back to source forever. God made the sea in a way that it doesn't flow back to source. The same route it came. Never. It will only flow down and go. Always. All seas. In fact, many seas start from a mountain. So water does not go up the mountain. It goes down the mountain into the valley and moves. 
But one day, when Joshua and the priests put their leg inside the river Jordan, bam, the river Jordan cut into two and started flowing back to his soul. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. You can live an immortal life in this mortal world. And the sea began to flow back to where it came from. The sea was returning back like that. Returning back like that. Red Sea, oh, was a Red Sea parted and went up and became a wall. That was the first ice block on it. A wall on this side and a wall on that side. Ice block made of water. The children of Israel passed on dry ground. The ground became very dry. The water was like wall, wall, or like wall. What is wall in Kiswahili? Huh? Who what? Ukuta. Wonderful. Like Ukuta. It's the same thing. Though. It became like wall, water. Became Ukuta. On this side and on that side. And the ground dried up. And the people walked. And they passed over to the other side. And then the Egyptians decided to also enter. Because the ground was dry. They entered. When they got in the middle, God made the ice block to hit them together and kill all of them. <laughs> Are you following me, somebody? Uh, God can do anything. So it means God had already planned it that I will make the sea become ice block. How many of you know that ice block is like stone? When you take ice out of the fridge and you hit somebody with it, it will wound the person. It's like a stone. So God used the ice block to crush them and grind them so that it can be easy for fishes to eat them. Are you following me? Fishes ate them. Recently, they found some chariots in the Red Sea. Chariot wheels. To, and that was what they used to remember that, ah, the Egyptians really died here. Because somebody was saying that they, did, they didn't die. It was a lie that the Bible told. So God now made some people find chariot wheels in the Red Sea that have been there. from The, 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 the chariot wheel refused to decay. It remained there until they found it in our generation. After so many years. Are you still here? So God suspended the power of the sea. Again, Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that he, he went what he had promised, he was able to perform. Now look at that scripture. The deadness of Sarah's womb. God suspended the, the power of nature and life in the life of Sarah. Sarah's womb was already dead. God switched it on again. After Menno stopped to give birth to Isaac. Not menopause. Menopause is 45, 50. Menno stop is 90 and above. Menno have stopped completely. This womb was already dead according to the word of God. God use his power to that. See, excuse me, sir. God can't do anything for you. Stop looking down on him. You can live a supernatural life on earth. You can live a supernatural life on earth. Even with myself, looking at it naturally, I didn't believe that we could build this church last year. I didn't believe it would happen. I thought we were going to just stay in the tent, build the children's church, and be having service in the tent. I've already taken a picture of the tent, build the altar, and wanted us to be using it like that. Except that the tent tore in the middle. And when it is funny, some of you remember, we'll be running up and down, put water, put uh, here, something here, put something around that area. All the edges, water was coming, and the middle like this. I was now wondering, what do I do? I call one man to come and patch the tent. He patched the tent. After patching it, he told the people in Kiswahili that when rain falls, we will remember him. Yeah. He told them in Kiswahili. When he left, they told me that that guy that came to part this tent said, Where is Paul? We will know he is a tent patcher. And truly, where is Paul, sir? Where is that falling? It was better we never called him. Water came and flooded this church, sir. The guy was a very wicked human being. We called him, he refused to pick his course. Water began to spoil things in church. Some of you remember the office at the back. Water will be pouring into it. My office upstairs, in those days, went that I used wood to do. Water will be pouring into it. 
all the things that we kept in one store there, water was pouring into it. The only place that would be safe was the multimedia room. Every other, if I feel in that room there, what rain will beat the hell out of you. Church, water everywhere. Father, what do I do? God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Lord, go ahead, build your church. Then he started showing me this building because as at that time, I never had plan for this building. I had plan at least for the back and this one. God have already shown me this one and the back. This, the one that we have not built yet, that, the one that's coming there. God showed me that one first. This, that one was second. This one was last. But he finished this one first. He collected the things that have been not as though they were. He finishes the end from the last. <laughs> this was the last one I saw. I already saw this one before we left in Ghana. I showed you guys the picture of the building that's going to be there. I showed you guys the picture of the building there. In fact, the architect came and showed, and showed you guys that one. But we're not being that one yet. When we came here, God showed me the back one. So I was very interested in that one. Suddenly, God showed me this one, how it's going to be. Now, before I thought it was going to be short like this one, these two glasses, I was already planning to get these two glasses. I already got contractors that are going to tell us, you know, build these two glasses, this one and the window. I was very ready. They told us it was 400,000. I said, ah, ah, 400,000 is too much. So they said they are going to show me a church that was built like that. So I followed them. When I entered that church, I didn't like what I saw. The church was looking somehow. It was built with glass, but uh, the glasses were doing like this and like that. I don't like it at all street. So I came out of the place. The pastor spoke very well to me. Told me, can even give me the who built the whole his own. The guy will do it for me. Less than a million. Everything will be built with glass. I said, all right. I came. They even brought the guy. The guy measured everywhere. Told us he's going to collect, I think, 100,000. By the second time he came, he changed his money. He said he's going to collect 260,000. By the third time he came, he said he's going to collect half a million. I said, oh, bros, you are a thief. Leave the church. Okay, run right away from here. He kept on increasing the price. Then I began to ask God. Then suddenly I saw the building, the church, grow up into the sky like that. Then I saw that the side was three times the height of what we had before. It grew in my presence like that. Then God spoke to my ears and said, whoever will do the roof must use the former tent as part of the roof. <laughs> so I wrote it down. It's good to hear from God. Sir. So I wrote it down. Then I called the former foreman. We are not going to do three meters. We are doing nine meters because I saw the church three times the height of what it used to be before. He said, ah, it will be too tall. I said, it doesn't concern you. Are you a member? If you're a member, then you can advise. If you're not a member, I don't need your advice. Your job is to build. Then I began to draw what I saw. I called the architect and drew. And then I said, I saw the back, a gallery like this. I drew it. Ah, but I never, I thought it was going to happen like in five years' time. Because I don't want to put myself and put anybody under pressure. I want to be praying gently and the thing will be built. But the Almighty God stepped in and made it happen in the pandemic season. Are you following me? In the pandemic. And people were sending seed from everywhere. Hey, Apostle, hey, hey this, I've sent you 1,000. Apostle, I've sent you 5,000. That's it. That's it. And everybody, money was put into judicious, you see. Ordinary glass, this glass, these two sides, is $16,000, $1.6 million, this one. Just this one. Ordinary, this one. This one. Uh, this one. $16,000. Let's leave the rest. <laughs> this decking is $5,000, half a million. That was half a million. That's half a million. Let's leave these ones. Are you following? Listen carefully. God can do some supernatural things in your life when nobody's expecting it. Submit yourself to God. In fact, I think I've taught you enough. The one I thought you should be okay now. True or false? Huh? You should be okay now. Huh? Maybe I'll continue next week. <laughs> Let me show you one secret of how to get it. Next week, I'll give you four more secrets of how to get there. How many of you want to get it? You are very sure? Raise your hand above if you are sure. If you are not sure, put down your hands. Give you the way you are. <laughs> I'll give you one. Should I give you only two secrets? One or two, one or two. I'll give you the best next week, Tuesday, if you come. Now, secret number one. Give your life to Christ and live a sanctified life. 
give your life to Christ and live a sanctified life. Stop living in the flesh. Stop being proud, arrogant, full of yourself. Stop living in the flesh. When you live in the flesh, you are difficult for God to carry. In fact, normally I smell people who live in the flesh. I can notice you and I don't like that, like that around me. When you live in the flesh, you'll be very wicked. You have to be pretending. Canal. Stop it. If you keep living in the flesh, you can never live a supernatural life. It can never happen. The Bible says we should live in the spirit not in the flesh when you live in the flesh you can never accomplish supernatural things it will never happen give your life to christ and live a sanctified life stop entertaining sin not just sin stop entertaining flesh carnal life thinking like a normal human being i, I used to watch when i tell people to do something and they say it's impossible. I know this one is permanently in the flesh. I say, put that like there. He say, eh, there's no wire. You know that one. He's not in the spirit. Eh, sweet that thing on. Say, ah, the man that you see there is not around. That is flesh. Such people, God can never use them for supernatural happiness. You block God. Pessimistic people. Permanently negative. You will never live in spirit because... God only gives you instruction. He doesn't tell you the outcome. The outcome will only surprise you. He told me, start being that. Look at the outcome. Look at, he, he didn't give me the outcome. I, I did not know it was going to be this fine. I didn't know. He didn't. He only told me what to do. I started doing it and it started coming out well. In fact, the second and the third decade, this one and this one, I didn't plan to make it this big. I wanted to cut it in between and in between. But I was thinking to myself, I will not waste all this space. Let me not waste it. To be equal to this one, and that was how it came out like this. Yes, I wanted to cut it in between, just at the back there, in between at the back there, just something small. But I said, Ah, see all this white space, let me release my feet. Let me release my feet. I release my feet, and it shot out. Look at it. In fact, that space in front is the best of the spaces, the two of them. <laughs> God does not tell you where he's, how he's going to take you there. He tells you, go! That's all. If you are in the flesh, you say, I go to where? Why must I go? For what? Ah, why? No. Ah, I've not gone there before. For my grandfather didn't go. The other time he wanted to go, he died going. No? You have enough reasons not to go. I want to say something. See? Many times, when you fall sick, the day you should be in God's presence, it is the devil that doesn't want you to be in God's presence because you would have gotten something that will make you better than you were. So the devil is convincing you not to go so that you, be, you remain where you are. But many Christians, especially around town, do, do not understand that it is the devil denying you of divine privilege. You now start pretending as if you are doing the pastor good for, not coming, to, uh, uh, for coming to church. Whenever you notice that there's an attack on your body, when you should be in God's presence, it is the devil that wants to deny you of your next level. What you do is break loose and enter God's presence. Don't be in the flesh that say, I need to now rest. Let me rest now. Let me ah. You have helped the devil, oh, you are a fool. So let me rest my body. You know. You know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. Let me just take some rest now. Don't do it. It is the devil that knows that if you go to God's presence, you will carry more glory. So what he does is make sure you don't enter there. Do you know that on that day that you should be in God's presence, he will tell you to rest. But on the day, the next day we should go to work. It's government that you are bouncing. You are not bouncing. You go to work. You now go to the office. Then when it's getting to weekend again, the devil resumes because he knows that's the routine. Making sure you are denied. Making until finally when he gives you one dangerous disease, you will now begin to breathe. <laughs> You, know, you, can't, you can't even come to God's presence anymore until you aspire from somewhere. Don't give the devil a room. Live a sanctified life, a life devoid of the flesh. You are given an instruction. Stop answering negatively. Is it the spirit? You will never go. Switch on the camera. No, no, no. It cannot be switched on. Uh, uh, black magic has scattered. Switch it on first. If you cannot obey the simple instruction, you cannot carry the supernatural. You can't. Because God does not want you to explain. He says, move. Just move. Are you hearing me, somebody? God, 
a word comes. Carry the stuff. Carry it. Learn to live a life devoid of flesh or else you will not be able to operate the supernatural. One day God said I should begin to take communion. I didn't ask him many questions. I said let's take the communion. That's all. And I began to take communion. God started making me healthier and stronger. Healthier and stronger. Healthier. Simple. God said I should begin to give members of the church communion because I told him I don't want to bury members. He said give them communion. They will leave. I started giving you guys communion. Look at everybody's alive and healthy. <laughs> That's the way it was. Imagine I say, ah, eh, Uncle Lagbada ate communion in 1930 and he died. Auntie Tamedo also ate it the other time. In fact, he ate it. He was very sick. or was shaking like this when they gave him. He now finally died. I would have destroyed what God wants to do. <laughs> All right. Let me give you one more point. I will close. Second point. How do I activate this thing? I said number one is get saved and live a sanctified life. I'll give you one point from the back. Pray until something supernatural happens to you. I'm picking the first and the last point. Pray until something supernatural happens to you. Pray. Pray. Settle down to pray. Pray until something supernatural happens to you. Pray. 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 Fire prayer. Fire prayer. Some of the things that you see supernaturally happening around me, I prayed for many days asking for them. And as I prayed one day, an encounter hit me. Bam! And my life changed. I remember a young man called Shim that came to Nairobi to stay with us. That boy called Shim was a student of Covenant University many years ago. When he became a student, he moved from year one to year two, year three to year four. In year four, first semester, he was sent out of the university. He was expelled. Why? Because he failed. He had many carryovers that the school just expelled him. His father called me and said, Sir, I don't want to be disgraced. Please, help me. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, hey, you said the other time that people can come and visit you in Kenya. Can my son visit you? I said, all right. I was in America. I went to preach. So I said to myself, ah, and I have not told Pastor Grace that I am agreeing that the visitor should come and stay with us. How do I do it? Oh, the father said, I'll buy his ticket. He will come the next uh, two days. I told him I was coming back from America that day. I needed to inform my wife. He said, just inform her anyhow. My son is a good boy. He's okay, sir. I said, okay, no problem, sir. Let the boy come. When I get home, I'll start explaining to Pastor Grace. So the boy entered the aircraft, landed JKIA, I think three hours before me. Three hours later, I landed from America, JKIA. So I told him, I told the father to tell him when he finishes, let him come out and stay somewhere and wait there. I will locate him there myself when I land three hours later. So I flew from Detroit to Amsterdam, from Amsterdam to Nairobi. So I landed three hours after he landed. I came out. I just saw him wearing his clothes, standing somewhere with his bags. So I called him, hey! So he saw me, ah. Then we came back home together. Then I was scratching my head to explain to my wife that hey, it is well, oh, this guy is not coming to visit us for a few days. He's going to stay for a long time. So thank God I had favor. When I explained to her that hey, the father said the boy should remain with us. The boy is a good boy, no problem. Then we started looking for school for him. We looked for school. We couldn't find school. We looked for school. We couldn't find. He did. He went. Took all the certificate. They couldn't change the certificate. <laughs> there was a problem everywhere. <laughs> I was wondering, what do we do? In those days, we used to do seven hours prayer in church. Those of you who remember at Ngara, I will make you guys pray in tongues for five hours or something. So he came. All of us were praying. Ah, you can enter supernatural chapter if you can pray. The boy joined us. All of us were praying very early in the morning. He could look at that guy. It was five hours prayer, I remember. I told them to pray in the Holy Ghost. He was praying. He was praying. All of us were praying. By that time, we have looked for school. Couldn't find school. Universities rejected him everywhere. We have gone to Kenya, this and that, and nothing accepted him. We went everywhere. In fact, I remember, Musila used to be in church in those days. Musila took him to where they would equate his resort. When they didn't answer him, well, Musila insulted them, and they pursued him, and Musila away from the place. And they said they don't want to see them again. I mean, that day, we began to pray. The young man began to pray in one corner of the church. All of us were praying. Suddenly, the anointing hit him in prayer. 
Ha! I heard his voice. He started shouting. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. He was shouting. He was shouting. He was shouting. He kept on charging. He kept on charging. Until we finish. When we finish, he was shaking, shaking like this. He was charging. He said, sir, I don't know what happened to me. And I said, that is an encounter. Not a kind of encounter. He said, eh, eh, I'm shaking. Though. I'm shaking, sir. I, I'm not normal. I said, you are normal. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that I just encountered you. From that day, he started praying every day. I forced him to pray three hours every day. I forced him to pray. Forced him to pray. I forced him to pray. Whenever I'm praying, I'll call him. Show him. Ah, come and pray with me. He will sit in the city room. He will do that. Come on, get up. Right? So we get up and be praying. He kept on praying. I kept on drilling him. The guy kept up. After that encounter, one day, the younger brother of the owner of a major university in Kenya came to visit me for prayers. He called me as a man of God. I need your assistance as I'm at home. He drove his jeep or whatever to my house. Bam. Entered. I looked at him and prophesied. And the prophecy hit him. Bam. Accurately. And I prayed for him. After prayer, then I remembered this boy. Ah! I have a young man here who needs to go to school. He said, give me all his credentials. And he took it to where they would equate it. And he sorted everything out. And in less than two days, they gave this guy admission letter. Bam. He entered the university. He entered university. He was in that university for three and a half years. He came out with two one. He came out with two one because they collected all the results from Nigeria. He quitted it in Kenya. The result was not too heavy. That was what made him not to get first class. In the same course he did and failed before. Encounter changed his story. He applied for school, for master's degree from Kenya here in, to Canada. He applied. He applied from here. After applying, he I got the scholarship and the admission together. His father told him, don't come back to Nigeria. From there, be going. <laughs> be going. No, be going from there. Be going. Be going. So that you don't go and branch and something hold you from home and follow you. From here, I booked his ticket. I remember his ticket was seven, six hundred or something dollars, seven hundred dollars. Booked his ticket from here straight to Canada. He got his visa from here. Bam, I dispatched him to Canada. He finished his master's degree with distinction one encounter sir if you can pray you can have an encounter that will change your story from mortal to immortal stand to your feet <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah praise god stand to your feet stand to your feet if you can pray if you can pray oh glory to jesus thank you lord the guy's life changed your life will change i want you to pray right now father change my life from mortal to immortal life on earth. There are things that must not happen to me anymore. There are things that must not happen in my life anymore. Anymore. Mazokataka bragadoshe gadusa. Yekelegadege bragadoshe gadusa handa. As I take to this communion. There are things that must never happen to me again. Never happen. There are things that must never happen to me again. Ose kalaga bagado shigadu za. Ori ya kalaga dagada. Maro kalaga dagada. Ori kedege dagada. There are things that must never happen to me again. Ori kataka bagado shigadu za. Ori ya kalaga dagada ba. Maro kataka bagado shigadu za. Ori ya kalaga dagada ba. Maso kalaga dagada dagada. There are things that will never, never, never. They will never happen to me anymore. Ori kalaga dagada dagada dagada. Ori ya kalaga dagada ba. Maso kalaga dagada ba. Ori kataka immortal life that's what i want to live i want to live an immortal life on earth in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to start living that life here. Oh, see, Kalaga Bragadoshe Garusa. Oh, yeah, Kalaga Bragadagraba. Iso Golagodo Goroba. I will not be negative. I will not live in the flesh. I will live in the spirit all the days of my life. He can take a gadagraba. Oh, yeah, Kalaga Dagraba. Maso Kalaga Dagadagraba. Oh, yeah, Kalaga Dagadagraba. Maso Kalaga Dagadagraba. Katoko Bragadoshe Garusa, Oria Kalagadagrava, Maroka Lagadagrava, Ora Kataka Bragadoshe Garusa, Oria Kalagadagrava, 
Masoka la gada 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 ba. Oriya kala gada gada ba. Masoka la gada gada ba. Eka taka braka doshe garusa. Oriya kala gada gada ba. Maroka la gada 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 ba. Ose kala gada 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 ba. Maroka la gada 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 ba. Ora kala gada gada ba. Isa kala gada 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 ba. Oriya kala gada gada ba. Doko doko ba. Oriya kala gada gada ba. Isa kala gada gada ba. Oriya kala gada 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 ba. Masoka la gada gada ba. Ore kala gada gada ba. Masoka la gada 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 ba. Ore kala gada 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 ba. Doko ba. Oriya kala Lord, I want to live a mortal life on earth, a life that cannot decay. I want to live death proof life. I want to live a sickness proof life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let impossibilities become possible in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me to walk and live in the realm of impossibilities, making them possible. Let it be so, God, living a supernatural life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you like it that others may be sick, but not you? And you eat the same food. You live in the same area. Same mosquito that beats you, beats them. But you are well. May God do that for you. Divine immunity. Suspension of the laws of nature. In your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to take the communion right now. And activate it in us. Are you ready? Remember I told you. Get saved and live a sanctified life. Number two. Pray until something supernatural happens to you. You can stay in church overnight and pray until something happens to you. All of us will know when it happens. When others are falling sick and you are not sick. All of us will know when it happens. When things are happening to others and nothing, no evil is befalling you. Rather, good things are happening to you. All of us will know. Connect yourself and let it work for you. I decree to be your portion. God will work it out for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright. Can we have the communion? And then let the choir give us the hymn. And then we'll take the communion right now. As we take it, activate the immortal in your body. I will continue this teaching next week because I've not even gone half. I'll continue next week, Tuesday. As we hear the word of God again. So make sure you get into God's presence. Come, and then you hear the word of God. Alright? Bring the communion. Bring the communion. There is now the body and the blood of Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let it strengthen us and make us healthy. Let it remove sicknesses from our bodies and cause us to become uncommonly healthy, supernaturally healthy, 
all the days of our life. Let it switch on the supernatural in us. Let it switch it on. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it switch on the immortal in us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Team number one. Page one. delivered to you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same man also took the cup when he has stopped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it to remembrance of me for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the Lord's death in the cup in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. As soon as you take it, begin to pray. Father, switch on the immortal chapter of my life. I refuse to die like a mere man. Activate the supernatural in me. Go ahead. Pass the cups and begin to pray. Go ahead, begin to pray. Activate the supernatural in me. Activate it. 
activate the supernatural in me let my life become an immortal life if you need to kneel down kneel down you need to stand up stand up make sure you are praying activate the supernatural in my life activate the supernatural in me Oriya kala gaba gado gado gado, e kala gaba gado gado gado. Oriya kala ba father activate the supernatural in my life, activate the supernatural in my life, activate it, O God. E kala gaba gado gado gado. Oriya kala gada gado, e saka kala gaba gado shikaduza. Maro kala gada gado, ore kala gaba gado shikaduza. E kala gaba gada ba, oriya kala gaba gado shikaduza ta. E saka kala gado 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 ba, ore kata kaba gado shikaduza. Maro kala gada ba. Iso kolo kolo ba, oriya kala gaba gado kolo ba, maroka taka braka doshe garusa, oriya kala gada gada ba, e kala gaba braka doshe garusa, oriya kala gaba gado kolo kolo ba, ora kala gaba gado kolo ba, iso kolo 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 ba, oriya kata kaba braka gada ba. Father, activate the supernatural in my life, activate the immortal in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, iso kolo 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 ba, oriya kala gaba braka doshe garusa, oriya kala gada gada ba. Maroka taka braka doshete, ora kala gada 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 ba. Maroka la gada gada ba, ora kala gaba gado sokodo gada ba, oriya kala gada gada ba, masoka la gada gada ba, ora kala gaba gado shikaduza, ora kala gada gada ba, maroka la gada gada ba, ora kataka braka do shikaduza, oriya kala gada gada ba, maloka la gaba gado gada ba, ora kala gada gada ba, maroka la gada ba, isogolo gado gada ba, ora kataka braka do shikaduza, oriya kala gada gada ba, maroka la gaba gada ba, ora kala gaba gado gado gada ba. Ore kataka braka do shikaruza, ori ya kala gada gada ba, isa kala gada gada ba, maro kala gada gada ba, ora kala gaba gado gada ba, ore kala gada gada ba, maso kala gada gada ba, e kala gaba gado gada ba, ori ya kala gaba gado gado ba, ore kala gada gada ba, maso kala gada ba, isa kala gada gada ba, ori ya kala gaba gado gada ba, ori ya kala gaba gado gado gada ba, ora kala gaba gado gada ba, o she kala gada gada ba, maro kala gada ba, isa kala gada gada ba, ori ya kala gaba gado gada ba, e katoko braka gado gada ba, ora kala gaba Bagado shikaruza, oriya kala gada gada ba, maroka kala gaba gado gada ba, oriya 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 kala gaba gado gada ba, Father, activate the supernatural, the supernatural in me, activate it, O God, activate it right now. E kataka braka do shikaruza, oriya kala gaba gado gada ba, oriya kala gaba gado shikaruza, oriya kala gaba gado gada ba, maroka kala gada ba, e kataka braka do shikaruza, activate it, O God. I re. Is to be sick. I will never be weak. I will not die before my time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I live a celestial life in this terrestrial world. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I live a celestial life in this terrestrial world. Ore kala gaba gado gado ba, ori ya kala gaba gado shikaruza, ore kala gaba gado gado, e kala gaba gado shikaruza ta, e kala gaba gado gado gado, ore kala gaba gado ba, maro kala gaba ba, ora kata gaba gado shikaruza, ori ya kala gaba gado ba, e zaka kala gaba gado ba, ori ya kala gaba gado shikaruza, ore kala gaba gado ba, maro kala gaba ba, e zoko lo gaba ba, ori ya kala gaba ba, ore kala gaba gado, ore kala gaba gado shikaruza, ore kala gaba gado ba, maro kala gaba ba, e zaka kala gaba gado Ora kala gaba gado gado ba, ora kala gaba gado gado ba, e kataka gaba gado gado ba. Let it be so. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. We pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. 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 Thank you, Father. In of this word in their life by the switching on of the immortal in us in the name of jesus christ start now thank you father 
in jesus name we pray everybody say amen god bless you you may be seated now i encourage you to create time to pray get to church stay over pray in the night get to church in the afternoon though in the afternoon the builders will be working but you can pray by the altar but in the night when they are not really working or disturbing take out time pray two hours three hours settle down talk to god talk to god so that your life can become different stop telling the story they attack me in the night they attack me now they are almost killing me how long will you tell that story i'm almost there, I'm almost there. when don't let them kill you get to god's presence and settle down create some time stay around there's enough room over room is worrying this place now if it was in Gara, you say there's no room in fact at Gara, people stay sleep on the rug on the floor and wake up to pray how much more when there are rooms everywhere where you can hide your head get up fire prayer make sure the rooms are kept clean anyway fire prayer very well and then go back to work pray the supernatural into your life it is an encounter that parts the supernatural if you don't pray to bad you keep suffering you keep telling the same story keep telling the same story you're always begging always looking for, for what is not lost everything you are looking for is already made is provided for by god stop suffering stop it get to god's presence come and pray ask him and he will do it for you all right let's give our offerings so we can go those that need to stay back stay back and pray and let god answer you if you have yours physically you have your offering physically you can step forward and drop it in the offering bowl with your tights you can collect an envelope and write tights if it's you have it electronic send it by mpesa PBO. if you're in diaspora send it by send wave or paypal and god will bless you in the name of jesus those in diaspora but if you have yours physically here go ahead send it if you have the church account use the church account hallelujah praise god I want Brother Robinson, Sister Miriam, Sister Mweni, Sister Mary, Sister Imani, Pastor Moses to see me before they go. And this young lady there, join them to see me before you go tonight. Brother Yaro, join them also. Immediately we finish, just come close. I release the anointing upon the offerings that you are giving now. I decree you will swim in plenty. You will never lack anything good. In the mighty name of Jesus, God gives you more than enough. I decree you will never beg for bread. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that God wipes away your tears financially. I declare and decree that God causes you to swim in plenty. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You will operate supernatural money flow in jesus name in fact i will release that anointing on you deliberately i feel an anointing on me but that's where i felt it the other day too and i professor but i feel the anointing so what you do is drop your offering and come i want to touch your hand for supernatural flow of money that you didn't plan for come quickly let's close so now we can close very fast drop your offering come supernatural flow of funds if you don't need this stay on your seat you don't need those who need it you see supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name, supernatural flow of funds. In Jesus' name, supernatural flow of funds. In Jesus' name, supernatural flow of funds. In the name of just supernatural flow of funds. In the name of just supernatural flow of funds. Supernatural flow of funds. In the name of Jesus, two hands. Supernatural flow of funds. In Jesus' name, 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 supernatural flow of funds. In Jesus' name. Supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name. 
supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name. Supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name. Supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name. Supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name. Supernatural flow of funds in Jesus' name. We receive in this church supernatural flow of funds in the name of Jesus Christ. We will never lack anything good. Let it come now. Let's start coming. Let's start coming. I prophesy it. Let it start coming. Supernatural flow of funds. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Some people will receive a lot on their MPSA. Some receive a lot in their account that you never planned for. Supernatural flow of funds. In Jesus' name. Rise to your feet. When you are coming on Thursday, invite somebody to church. We will pray the immortality to manifestation. On Tuesday, I will take the second aspect of the teaching. Take it deep so you can understand that you can live a supernatural life in this world. Alright, let's share the grace of fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. All right, those I said should see me, please see me here now. And then that man also come over so that we can sort your matter out. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. See you on Thursday. I need you guys to visit church regularly. Know what is going on. Try to affect things here and there. Don't be an alien to church. And then come to church 